Hello everyone, this is Nystagmus, and today we are introducing a new series called Better Know a Leader, where I create short videos on the various leaders of Civilization VI. The purpose of these videos is to give you a little background on the various personalities that lead our favorite civs in the game. As a disclaimer, this is not meant to be an absolute authority, but act as an introduction into the various influential people in Civ VI. I will be placing references and places to go for further reading if you want to know more. Today's episode, we take a look at my home country, Canada's leader, Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Sir Wilfrid Laurier was Canada's seventh prime minister from 1896 to 1911. He served in this capacity as the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada. He holds the record for prime minister to serve the longest continuous term. Laurier was Canada's first francophone prime minister from the French Canadian province of Quebec. Laurier led Canada during a period of rapid growth industrialization, and immigration. His long career straddles a period of major political and economic change. As Prime Minister, he was instrumental in ushering Canada into the 20th century and in gaining greater autonomy from Britain. Laurier also presided over the introduction of Alberta and Saskatchewan into Canada. The next Canadian province to enter into the Federation would not be until 1949 with Newfoundland and Labrador. His government was eventually defeated in 1911 over reparosity and free trade with the United States. He served in opposition during World War I and died while serving as leader of the official opposition in 1919 of a stroke. Even though Canada celebrates the anniversary of Confederation from 1867, it is important to note that Canada was not completely independent from the British Empire at that time. When Laurier began his tenure, many English Canadians still considered themselves British. At the time, Canada had two main political parties. The Conservatives, at the time, represented basically English Canada, and the Liberal Party that represented the views of the French Canadians. Laurier was the best known for being French Canadian, but since he had English schooling, was able to identify with the views of English Canadians, and thus always tried to strike a balance between the two. This division came to a head during the Second Boer War in 1899. English Canadians expected Canada to fully support the Brit Empire, whereas French Canadians were heavily opposed to any form of conscription to send Canadian troops. Laurier ultimately decided to send a volunteer force of 7,000 Canadians. This division again came, became an issue as the arms race between Germany and Britain heated up in the early 20th century. When Britain asked Canada for money and resources to build more battleships called dreadnoughts, Laurier compromised and built Canada's own navy of five cruisers and six destroyers, which was subordinate to the British Royal Navy. At the time, this was criticized as being called a, quote, tin pot navy, end quote, by critics. Finally, Laurier was unable to strike this balance effectively during the election of 1911. Free trade with then-President Taft became an election issue. The Anglophile conservatives framed free trade with the Americans as an affront to the empire. Despite trade with the U.S. for Western Canada making more sense, then when Laurier was defeated, free trade was rescinded. This would be the start of an east-west divide that still exists to this day. One of the reasons why the developers of Civilization VI likely chose Sir Wilfrid Laurier is that he is widely considered one of Canada's most effective statesmen, slowly cultivating the Canadian state away from the British Empire. He is best known for the following quote, Canada is free, and freedom is its nationality. However, as we will see, at the turn of the 20th century, who was entitled to this freedom was extremely narrow. Laurier presided over an era of mass immigration to Canada. During his 15 years as Prime Minister, the population of Canada grew, grew by more than a third. He turned to Canada from this to this. Laurier's government embarked on a mass propaganda campaign to settle the Canadian West, and it worked. Western Canada was populated by peoples from all over Europe. Soon, Canada was not just English and French parts. Canadians settling in the West had no stake in the old divides of the, of the country, forever changing its political landscape. Although Canada today is thought of as an open, multicultural society, immigration policy under Laurier was explicitly racist and discriminatory. Taxes were placed on groups wishing to immigrate from India and China in order to make it more difficult for them to do so. Exclusionary policies were also developed. For example, in order to immigrate from India, you had to disembark from a ship that took a, the journey directly, which was extremely rare at the time. Also, in 1911, Laurier signed an Order and Council 
that would have barred black Americans fleeing segregation in the American South entry into Canada. As immigrants came to Canada to settle in the, quote, last best West, as Laurier's government put it, this led to the mass displacement of Aboriginal peoples in Western Canada. Laurier's government routinely broke treaties and forced Aboriginal people to reservations to make way for white settlers. Under Laurier, the nightmarish residential school system had also continued. This was a dark time in Canadian history, and this was not abolished in its entirety until 1986. In 2015, a landmark Truth and Reconciliation report into the legacy of the residential school system in Canada issued a damning verdict that the policy amounted to cultural genocide of Ab Aboriginal peoples. Reconciliation remains elusive between the Canadian government and the Aboriginal peoples who live within its borders. Laurier, like many of his contemporaries, should be viewed with a complex lens. While as a statesman, he was instrumental in cultivating a distinct Canadian identity away from the British Empire and oversaw unprecedented growth of the country, he was still susceptible and contributed to the many racist policies and discriminatory attitudes of his time that still have lasting impact to this very day. Well, that's it for this episode of Better Know a Leader. History is a complicated subject. If you would like to know more, check the description for more resources. If you have a good idea of who I should profile next for this episode, let us know in the comments below. And as always, give us a follow on Twitch and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. 